If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show today. We're going to talk about growing in containers, some great tips for you. As well as planting trees 101. And with author and contributor, magazine contributor, Barbara Pleasant. She's a good vegetable grower, lots of great information. Plus your garden questions, and they all start right now. Right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you've taken time out of your day to join us on the program, whether you're listening in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, Banning, California, or anywhere in between. We're so happy you've taken time out of your day to join us on the program, whether on uh, in-studio video replay or podcast replay. So happy for that. You can find all of our content at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com under the radio tab where full-length podcast of this program can be found as well as in studio video as well as go to your favorite podcast providing website to capture and uh, revisit all past shows i am your host joy baird next to me is my wife co-host best friend and gardening partner hi baird you uh the the wisconsin vegetable gardener uh, dot com it contains over 1400 garden videos now short and long format as well as twitter facebook instagram and alike the executive sponsor of the program today is Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA. With We offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Oh, you can always get a hold of us in a variety of different genres, and they all revolve around the IV Organics Hotline. IV Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard, uh, plant guard naturally, naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields prune and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic. For more information, visit IVOrganics.com. You can reach us by the IVOrganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can text us on the Instant Access IVOrganics.com text line, and that's 414-368-9311. You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG. Our Twitter handle is at TWVG Show. Don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. Uh, we want to make mention that last week was our 80th show of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Uh, you can capture, uh, as we talked about, you can go to your favorite podcast providing website and ca- uh, revisit any of those as well as they're all captured within studio video. So, been, uh, three seasons, uh, 80 shows, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cool deal that we're all, sell- we are self-funded and we do this all ourselves. Uh, there's still time, uh, Holly, for our listeners to win a weed dragon or mini dragon. Do you want to win something for free? Do you want an easy way to get rid of weeds? You can with a weed dragon that attaches to a stand, stand and propane tank or a mini dragon that attaches to a one pound propane tank. When flame weeding, the most effective way is to catch the weeds early from one to four inches. Um, and then it re- removes all those, those weeds. And you can enter the contest by going to email us at twvgshow at gmail.com. You want to put in the subject line weed dragon or mini dragon. You can find name, all, yeah, yeah. all information will be on our website at the dot com. It's at the top. Um, and then if you want to buy one, you use the code WVG19 for free shipping. Or you can text us at 414-368-9311. And, uh, yeah, identify if you want Mini Dragon or Weed Dragon. Uh, Propane tanks not included in this giveaway. So let's talk about container gardening. Container gardening, whether you have a lot of ground to grow in or you have no ground, a patio, porch deck, or elsewhere, container uh, container gardening is a great alternative, and you can grow a lot in a container. It doesn't, it's not, uh, it's not very restrictive restrictive to you if you kind of understand how to go about uh, getting the containers and what you can grow in them. Right. So even if you do have ground to grow in, we use containers for a few different things. One is to add more space. Another one is you grow you, you grow rhubarb in a container. Um, sometimes you don't want to grow certain things in the ground like mint that can spread. Uh, so you yeah. want to think about the right size container for what you're planting. 99% of the things in which you can grow in the ground, you can grow in a container. 
uh, excluding a few crops. But yeah, the size of the container. If it takes two square feet in the ground, you probably want something that's a little bigger than that for the container. You want to have good soil depth. A typical container, we, we use root maker grow bags, which are about 12 inches high. So one thing you and, want... And multiple gallons. One thing you want to think about is, is what you're planting. So like lettuce and the roots. So lettuce is not a very deep-rooted plant. It's a very shallow-rooted plant. So you could get away with like an old hanging basket to plant your lettuce in. But something like tomatoes, you're going to want like a five-gallon bucket because those are heavy feeder. They have deep roots. Um, and then even like squash, uh, what else? Right, well, uh, pepper. thing, peppers, yeah, with, uh, eggplants, potatoes. The thing with a container is, yes, it may have shallow roots, but also that doesn't mean it's a good idea only to have two or three inches in depth. No, but like a hanging basket Correct. is about four inches. you got four usually. to six inches. Yeah. Of, yeah. Because the lo- less amount of mass of soil you have in there, the quicker it will dry out. Additionally, the less amount of soil you have in there, the quicker the nutrient and uh, nutrients will leach out of it from natural rain and or watering. So you're going to have to supplement some type of uh, plant food or fertilizer on a regular basis or, or a couple of times during the growing season. So speaking the, about the rain, of rain it, and yeah. watering, you want to make sure your container has drainage holes. This is important because you don't want the water just sitting in the bottom. If your container doesn't have drainage holes, don't use or don't buy that container. Right, unless it's a five-gallon bucket and you're gonna you're gonna uh, drill holes in it or you know something of the like. Yes. So that's something that's very important. You need to be able to have drainage holes. Now, one thing you can uh, with with a five-gallon bucket, we talk you, you put holes in it. Most people would decide to just drill holes in the bottom. Mm-hmm. What I would recommend, what we would recommend, is going one inch up the side and then drilling holes. Uh, three or four holes in it. What that al- uh, uh, provides you is one inch of basically a water cushion, uh, a self-watering, wicking type of environment. You're going to fill the container full of soil. So whenever you water, once the water gets to the holes that are one inch up the side of the bucket, they will overflow and run out. There's still water that's capillated in the bottom of that bucket that will wick back up when the upper levels of the soil gets dry. So it can help you a little bit keep the plant a little healthier, happier, and even if you forget to water, it may save you in the long run. Right. So that's very important to know about drainage holes. Now, you can mulch around containers, which a lot of people might not think about, but that way mulching, you're not necessarily going to have any weeds because you're filling it with a, a good potting soil or good compost, but mulching helps retain that moisture. And it also which helps, is key. Which is key. So you might not you might think, oh, I have containers. I don't need to mulch that. Well, it's good. You can retain that moisture. Have you forgot to do something in your life? You will forget to water your containers. Exactly. That's exactly it. And that's one thing is that just because you're growing in containers, uh, make sure you are on a watering schedule with that. And, and there are irrigation systems in which, uh, a drip irrigation, which is designed for container gardens, that uh, you can hook it up and on a timer, so you do not have to worry about it. Uh, yeah, they have multiple little, units uh, or zones, yeah, yeah, multiple units and zones that you can hook up and go in your patio, porch, or deck. Uh, very efficient, very effective, uh, and it takes a lot of the uh, guesswork out of it, as well as the forgetness out of it. And then some, if you really want to get high tech, some link up to your Wi-Fi and you can control it with your phone and the whole deal there. But that's another program for another day. Right. So that's what. <laughs> That's our next next uh, item here is watching for moisture. So um, using irrigation, making sure you're on a watering schedule. During the hottest parts of the year, you want to make sure that you are maybe watering that container twice a day, sometimes maybe even three times a day, depending on the size of it. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's that, and then we go back to the size. Oversize uh, will save you even for short, short, shallow root crops because water naturally wicks up in nature, in the world, uh, wicks up from the soil level and vertically and then evaporates uh, from the, the underneath the earth, I forget, whatever you call those, the capillaries, and, um, mm-hmm. the water systems, the streams underground, wicks up and the water table. water table and hydrates the soil. So that's the same thing that's happening in a container. From the bottom up, it dries out. So that's what you want to be aware of. And again, uh, using mulch. Uh, will re- reduce the amount of watering you have to do. Now, mulch can be anything. It can be you shredded can, paper. It can be straw, chemical-free grass. You can it. take, if you have, like, old cloth, you can take and lay it in strips around your container. We have experimented, and this has worked, take an old sock, 
uh, that doesn't have preferably holes in it, fill it with sand, and then lay it on top of the container, and it creates a barrier. And then when you water, you just water it through the, the sand or the sock, and it hydrates the soil. Because what happens on the beach? Top of the sand, hot, dry. You, you rake back about an inch, moist. So it makes a great, um, and if you don't want to mix that sand in, that's one way of doing it. Uh, but there's many, many different options. We want to avoid anything that's going to leach chemicals in to the soil. Uh, in the container. That's the number one goal here, is to, to keep the soil healthy. Now, sometimes you may have to trellis or support what's in your container, so don't think like you can't grow cucumbers in a container, because you certainly can, and there's bush cu- cucumber varieties, but you can grow vine cucumbers, you can grow bu- uh, vine beans, pole, pole beans. beans, thank you. Um, you can grow bush beans too, but you can grow pole beans, you can trellis those, you can uh, grow tomatoes, tomatoes, trellis them, yeah, use them, uh, or cages. stake them, yeah, yeah. stake or cage them. So you definitely some can, squash, some squash. So you can definitely have support, and you can grow a squash. Maybe you have a ground and your soil's bad, and you just want to grow in containers, or you don't want to commit. You can still grow a squash. You just have to remember that um, it's going to vine out on the ground, and, and it's going to take a lot of water. Carrots do really good in the containers. I was thinking about that because that loose soil it, uh, allows the carrots to onions onions to grow real good. Uh, and, and a trellis can be anything that is functional. You can have it eye-pleasing, ple- but uh, Holly and I look at it. It doesn't have to be pretty. It has to be functional. Um, you know, and some people will take an old mattress and burn the mattress, the, the fibers off, and use the spring frame as a trellis. And it really works well for, like, pole beans. You can do a lot of pole beans. But that's a discretional uh, decision if you want to do such that. But uh, sticks, twigs, whatever fell out of the tree, jam them in. Let some those plants grab onto those um, structures because a lot of these, for peas, example, very weak-stemmed, and if they when they fall over, they'll pinch the stem, and the plant's done. doesn't matter how big they are. So you have to have some supporting apparatus in for these plants in order to grow successfully some of them. And one advantage to container gardening is that you're typically growing these off the ground. I mean, it might just be like the height of a five-gallon bucket, but maybe you have like a nice little planting bench and you grow them on this bench. You're able to see problems a lot. The elevation easier. aspect of it. Yeah, the elevation aspect. So that's something that is an advantage if you are if you go out there, look at your containers, and you see some sort of pest or bug, you're probably going to see a lot easier. There will be bugs and insects that affect the plants that are in your containers. However, some, it may be less because the elevation that plant, that some bugs can't get up, you know, they live on the ground, they live in the soil, they can't climb up the container and climb in the container. Some do, but there is uh, uh, the uh, availability to see them easier, uh, and there's some less uh, infestation that you may have on the plants as well. And then finally, placement of your container is key, but also the mobility that you have, that's the advantage with growing in containers if you do see a problem or uh, realize you put them in the wrong place at the beginning of the year. Right, and you preferably want to make this decision, especially for a five-gallon bucket before you fill it full, but if you have to move it, you know, you have to move it. But you want to think moving. about if you're moving. We did that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So you want to think about where you're putting it. You want to have some sunlight. Make sure it's not something where people or animals or whatever can get to. Otherwise, you can put some fencing around a container if you have to. Yeah, uh, a pr- protective means. Uh, additionally, if you have three pepper plants in a row in containers, and one pepper plant gets infestation, it, it get affected by some kind of insect or disease, you can physically remove that plant and isolate it because it's in a container until you figure out, one, a learning process. Okay, this plant may die, but let me educate myself on what this is, what it, what, what the result is, how it occurred, and then I can prevent it from happening or reduce the uh, effects of it for next year so you don't infect everything else around it. So that is uh, just some of the container planting uh, information which you can uh, use in your garden. And even when you have a ground garden to grow in, you can use containers. We use containers all the time. Well, don't go anywhere. When we come back, have you ever planted a tree? Do you want to plant a tree, ornamental or fruit? We'll go over what you need to know before you put a shovel in the ground. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show.
347-365. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com has all the gardening information you need. Videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at migardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, email with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. You're going to fail. I'm just being honest with you. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products, from plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. If you want a garden but you fear that you will fail, container gardening is the best option for you. With container gardening, each container is its own individual garden. You have more control over each plant, you can understand how it grows, and then next year you can move up to a larger garden. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Gardeners know the hardest part of building a garden is building the rows. Now there is a long overdue patented, hand-pulled, heavy-duty, lightweight row building marvel that you can find at rowmaker.com. The rowmaker can easily and quickly build multiple straight line, perfectly spaced rows of proportional height, width, and depth. This yellow workhorse makes building rows easy and so fast it will save you hours. Just pull it across your tilled garden and work smarter, not harder. See it to believe it at rowmaker.com. Planting your garden will never get easier. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Row Maker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. I listen to your show just about every week and uh, it's very informative. Well, we greatly so. appreciate that. Thank, well, thank you. you. With your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. 
know what also is very informational based and uh, organic? Dr. Earth Fertilizer. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through re- through creating re- cutting edge natural organic friendly garden friendly products based on research and innovation after 28 years they are the leader in organic lawn and garden industry they do not use ingredients such as bio solids composted household waste or synthetic chemicals instead they have a newer free fertilizer organic soil insect control and liquid fertilizers if you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family that is the founding principles of what dr earth is all about they have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically you can visit drearth.com to find out where to buy you can use dr earth to uh, fertilize your fruit trees or your ornamental trees but before we put them in the ground there's some things that we all need to be very very aware of in order to do it correctly anybody can just grab a tree dig a hole, throw it in the ground, but it may or it most likely will not be very successful if you're intending it to go long term. And one thing we don't talk about often is um, the importance of calling diggers hotline where you are, whether you're planting a tree, you're starting a new garden, you're planting a uh, hedge, whatever, you want to call diggers hotline. And the reason is that you don't know what's underneath your your ground. You may have lived in that location for 30 years and had a garden in the same spot for the, that amount of time you and you decide to put a tree in your front yard you don't know what's there so and, and even if you even if you think you know you don't know and diggers hotline is what's uh, here in the wisconsin area pennsylvania southeast michigan southern california you all have your own individual underground utility marking uh uh, uh, company or uh, uh, organization uh, so that is the law that you have to get that marked because they don't take kindly to, oh, I'm sorry, I dug that up, or I wrapped that around, or I cut that, uh, they, they don't think right. that's... Or, or, hit, or, and, or hit something, or you hit something with your shovel, and zzz. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so we want to be aware of that, because we didn't realize how much stuff was under our front yard whenever we had the yard marked for our front yard garden. Mm-hmm. It, it looked like, you know, just red lines and green lines, and yellow, there was, was all crazy. kinds Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Um, so on the opposite end of that, you want to look up. So you want to look for power lines and whatever else well, could be here's the, and why the reason with power lines is number 1 number 2 is how big is the canopy going to be at maturity and what is that potentially going to grow into is it going to grow into the side of the house neighbor's house neighbor's business what what's the what's the end result going to be is it going to trace over your property into their property so we want to look up and be very aware of what the end result, just like when we plant vegetables, how much space in between each plant, how big is that mature plant going to be, and how much space do we need? Same thing with the tree. Just because it's cute and little now, just like a puppy or a kid, they get big and take up a lot more space. <laughs> right. So that's something to think about. Um, if you're growing a, along with that, if you're growing a fruit tree, you can always top it or prune it, and that's something you want to know as well which is inform- which is important and really beneficial because fruit trees uh we've got a, a pear tree on our property that was there before we got there nobody it's probably about 30 years old it's 50 foot tall and when the fruit falls from the top portions of the tree there's nothing to save it it just smashes on the ground if you top cut or top prune your tree you can keep it very compactable and that's what orchards do as well so you can easily access uh, get ac- access to the fruit and it doesn't fall to the ground. You can harvest it, and you can utilize every aspect of that tree, what it provides you. Right. Stuff is something to think about. Um, plant in native soil. So uh, we're going to kind of talk about how you plant a tree properly. The first thing is is that when you plant this, you want to dig your hole, and you want to dig your hole probably about twice the size of the root ball that you're planting. And I actually <clears throat> work um, in the city of Milwaukee, and I was watching the, the, the up at my office, the department, a public works people plant trees and they did it very properly they they dug the hole twice as big and they did all of these things here so that's definitely really good but so you want to plant native soil so what we're saying is that you dig the hole twice as big and you don't want to try to backfill it with compost 100 percent. no don't do that you want to cut the netting off of the tree the the burlap and or the metal 
uh, woven wire that is typically wrapped or most times wrapped around this tree. If it's in a container, it can be root bound. So you want to, and that means the roots are wrapped around and continue to wrap around. You want to tease those out. Yeah, if you, you break some, it, it's okay. Yeah, you can take like a shovel if you need to and kind of and bend them out. Yeah, bend them out, kind of not really chop them, but take the shovel and kind of twist it around and stuff so you, so you release those roots. Now, why wouldn't you want to plant in 100% compost? Uh, it's good, rich soil. Yes, it is. The problem being is if you backfill that hole with 100% compost, that tree will never send out runner roots. It will stay right where it's at because all the nutrients that, that tree needs is right in that hole in which you provided for it. The problem with that is once that tree gets to uh, a certain height or gets higher and puts a canopy on, leaves are very heavy. We get a lot of wind. Everybody gets wind. Whenever that wind occurs, if that tree has not put out foundational roots, it's going to topple over. And it's just going to top right over, and the root ball is going to pop out because there's no uh, strength or structure for that root system to hold itself in the ground. Right. So, yeah, that's why you want to, to do that. Now, when you stake it, okay, so imagine, with you will, that your fist is your root ball of your tree. And you want to put the stakes on the outside. You don't want, so if you hold your fist up, you don't want to drive the stakes into your knuckles. You want to go outside of what your fist would be planted in the ground. And you want to plant your stakes outside of that root ball. And that way it doesn't, it allows for, if you need to stake the tree, a lot of times you don't have to. But if you need to stake the tree, it allows for those stakes to be supportive still, but it's not being driven into. And you can get, get, remove them. Yeah, you can remove them, that that too. And you don't want to tie it down. No, you want to use like. Very loose. Loose, very loose. And um, that's what's important. You don't want to tighten your tree down so that it can't move. You want it to move a little bit, but if it, if you need to stake it, then at least it has some support. And and really, you do not need to stake trees. That really is kind of a concept that is no longer necessary because trees have to be strong on their own. If you stake it and stake it too st- tightly, that tree is relying on the stakes and becomes very weak when you remove those straps or uh, wires or strings, and it doesn't have the ability to support itself. Uh, watering, we want to water regularly for first couple of weeks until the plant gets the tree gets established uh, even with native rain we want to get a, the, the tree plenty of water if you're getting a bare root tree or you're getting a tree that's in a container we want to hydrate that tree or any tree hydrate it before it goes in the ground especially bare roots let them soak in water for, native rain yeah, native rain. <laughs> uh, let them soak in water, a bare root tree, for six, eight hours. Do people bring in rain from other sources? Uh, you, you have no idea what some people do. That's true. Uh, um, you also want to... Fruit trees might need a second pollinator. Some fruit trees are self-pollinating. Uh, some fruit trees uh, may, uh, are required or do need by nature a second tree in order to pollinate uh, the fruit. So be aware of what you're selecting. One thing, one thing I want to mention is that a lot of people mulch around their trees, yes. which is fine, but you don't want to mulch what's called volcano mulch where it looks like the tree is the top it's of the volcano. It's three foot up the... Yeah. the, the you want to leave the, like uh, a little trunk. well around the tree. You can still mulch, but leave a well around the, the tree. A trench. Or like a trench, yeah. yeah. Uh, to, to capture the water so it's not running off. Uh, make sure you can grow that tree in your area. Yes, there are places you can buy trees from anywhere in the country and have them shipped to your place. Uh, some garden centers will sell tropical trees for indoor growth, uh, growing capabilities. But make sure it will grow in your, your area. Just because it can grow in Zone 4, or let, let's say the tree can grow successfully in Zone 6, that doesn't necessarily it means it can grow successfully in Zone 4. There are some trees, hardy varieties, many varieties are hardy in different zones based on the type of uh, plant or tree that you're getting. So keep aware of that. If you want a peach tree, you might be able to find one that's a hardy enough peach tree that will grow in your particular area. And then think about your tree intentions. Do you want a shade tree? Do you want a beautiful budding tree? Do you want a fruit tree? Think about why you're growing that tree, why you want to grow that tree, and realize that you're going to have that tree there for a long time. Probably, probably going to outlive you. So be, sure. be aware if you get a tree that outlives you, uh, what your, uh, what what that's going to look like. Um, so uh, keep that in mind. So planting trees, we encourage it um, if you know based on the situation and, and conditions that you want and the intentions that you have. Another problem that we face in our garden is uh, Japanese beetles. Yeah, Japanese beetles, they will probably, hopefully, be here before we know it. Or hopefully, hopefully, yeah, not hopefully, no. <laughs> uh, weevils, borers, various beetles, and their larvae 
uh, can cause, you know, harm. And if you want to protect your area without harming the good insects, but getting the bad ones, Phylum Bioproducts does just that with powerful, potent, and environmentally safe biological pest control products. It's the first BT insecticide powerful enough to control both adult and larvae stages of susceptible pets. pets. And unlike the chemical products, Phylum's line of products do not post, pose a risk to beneficial insects such as bees, butterflies, and other pollinators that exist with chemical products. Therefore, you can now achieve control rates that you expect from the chemical insecticides with doing, without doing harm. You can visit phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. Got a question? Email the show at twvgshow at gmail.com. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter Earth Auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root to soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthier, and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand welded and made in the USA, lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. New, new natural healing ointment, USDA certified organic. Get your tube at nunuhealing.com. Your plants are greener when using Hydrobox, revolutionary in plant watering. Hydrobox catches the water from water and delivers it straight to the roots to release when plants need it. You will water three times less often and plants grow faster. Hydrobox is an innovative little gel-filled pouch that goes in the bottom of a pot, container, or grow bag. Multiple sizes based on need. Easy to install and use for indoor and outdoor use. Saves time and money. Lasts up to three years. Look for it at homedepot.com or visit gohydrobox.com. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food. A fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system. Solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems raised garden bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway. Any level surface. For more information visit ecogardensystems.com use coupon code WIVEG2019 and get $295 off listed price of $1,695 plus free shipping a $250 value at ecogardensystems.com trellising an effective way to get your plants off the ground maximize space and production of the plants that you're growing This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. A trellis can be any device in which you purchase or build or find that can assist your plants growing vertically. This will increase the productivity, decrease the rot, and make it easier for you to harvest. Pole beans, cucumbers, peas, tomatoes, some winter squash are all crops that do benefit greatly from having support and allowing them to grow vertically. Tomatoes are a vine crop in the indeterminate variety and if left unsupported they will grow on the ground and 50% of your crop will be lost due to ground rot insects and just missing the fruit cucumbers and pole beans. It's much easier to harvest these crops when they're vertically. Cucumbers can sprawl on the ground. Pole beans do not do well if you do not support them. A trellis can be anything from some sticks in the ground to a manufactured purchased item to the bottom of a baby crib and anything in between to allow the plants to grasp onto the item in order to grow vertically. Some people even take old mattresses and burn them off and use the springs as a trellis. That's up to your discretion. But it maximizes the space because you can grow vertically. And for pole beans, you can get two to three times more off one plant of a pole bean than you can a bush bean plant. So get your plants up off the ground, maximize your space, and grow more. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. 
The new way to support your tomatoes, wrap it and snap it, tomatosnaps.com. World's coolest rain gauge.com. Need I say more? Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Helpful for weeding. ProPlugger.com. Soil Diva is the best kept secret in the gardening world. Soil Diva is an all-natural liquid biological soil and plant stimulant product. Check it out at Amazon.com. Search Soil Diva. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. BobX can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit BobX.com. B O B. B-E-X-C-O-M. Big Fats has a variety of unique and delicious hot sauces available at mild, medium, and hot. A small company looking to change the world with all natural hot sauces made from quality ingredients and a whole lot of love. BigFatsHotSauce.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin. Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. So in the first segment, you learned what you needed to know in order to grow successfully in containers. Now here's the next step. You can go to Blue Mouth Landscape and Garden Center and get a container mix in bulk. It's cheaper to buy it that way. And you can pick up all the plants that you need in order to plant your container garden. And they have a knowledgeable staff. They also have the Bloom Coffee Center. And they also have the playground for the kids. You can find all this at 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield. Just south of Layton, you can call 414-282-4220 or go to bluemills.com. Hello, I'm Robert Scott Bell, the voice of health, freedom, and healing liberty. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Holly, let's go to the IV Organic 3 one Plant Garden Hotline and bring in our guest. Barbara Pleasant is a contributing editor to Mother Earth News and Mother Earth Living Magazines, author of books to help gardeners grow along with their gardens, and a lecturer to garden clubs, shows, botanical gardens, master gardener organizations, and more. She's also the author of the book Homegrown Pantry, which is her most recent book. Welcome to the program, Barbara. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's great to be on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Well, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us on the program and educate not only Holly, myself, but all of our listeners as well. Well, it started raining, so I can't hill up potatoes. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we like to can our potatoes, but many people don't. What is the best way to have long-term potato storage without canning them? Well, you know, a lot of people just don't like pressure canning. It, it, you know, it, it scares them. And potatoes will store in a cool, dark place for a long time, and most people don't grow all that many. But now there are those potatoes that get sliced with a shovel or speared with a, a fork that, while you're harvesting, you know, the ones that you would declare calls that are damaged. You know, I bake those and then either shred them um, for hash browns or slice them into slices once they're cooked and then dehydrate those so that Making hash browns is just a matter of putting hot water in with the dried shredded potatoes and frying them in a nonstick skillet for a minute, and and they're ready. So it's really very, you make convenient food that way. Okay, that's that's a really good tip. Actually, never thought about doing that. Now you do make low, you make a low sugar jam using Pomona pectin. It's uh it's kind of a unique jam. Does it taste good? How do you do it? Uh, tell us more about that. Well, the procedure using Pomona pectin, which is a calcium-activated pectin, is a little different from using, for example, Sure Gel, where you just put things, put it in all at once. And in the traditional way, you can taste along to see how sweet it tastes. But to get uh, what a friend of mine calls a high gel rate, 
you need a lot of sugar. And so pomona pectin, the, the most similar thing I can describe is it works more like a gelatin. And you learn through experience. But see, if there's some guesswork involved because you put the sugar in at the end. So, so you brought your juice to a boil and, and put in some sugar, but you you mix the pectin with the sugar and dump it all in at once. Um, but you end up with a jam or a preserve with maybe half the sugar. And one of the things about making jams is, is you quickly learn that you don't need all that many, you know, many jars. It's not like we eat jam three times a day. And uh, it's easy to put up too much. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I did that when I first started making jam and was really successful with it. And then I was just giving giving it away. Please take my jam. Now, you make an onion jam. Can you tell us about the onion jam? I've oh, never yes. had that. Onion jam is, is wonderful. One year, for unexplained reasons, I had a lot of damage from um, onion root maggots, which are little fly larvae that tunnel into the onion. And you can't store them. They're, you know, the damage is on the outside of the onion, but... You have to go ahead and use them up. And so, um, yeah, I don't really care for dehydrated onions too much. Um, so I ended up making an onion jam, which has both vinegar and sugar in it. And it had beca- it became the basis for salad dressings and, and sauces, and it was so handy to have around. I mean, I hope to make some more this year, but I don't want to wish a pest problem on myself. Yeah, onion jams, it doesn't sound appealing, but I guess it's one of those things you can't judge it until you've tried it. But, you know, when I've taken it with me, when I've given talks and put out crackers and onion jam, people love it. And I I believe that in France it's much more common than it is here. Interesting. Uh, We grow, what we're getting here in the upper Midwest portions of the United States, getting ready to plant our winter squash. Uh, we like the yeah. Jardel pumpkin. What are some winter squashes that you would recommend for good long-term storage? Well, you know, the great thing about the Jardel pumpkin is that the seeds are probably the plumpest of all the seeds. If, if you wanted a pumpkin that had not as big as, you know, what we call pepitas or edible onion seeds, uh, edible pumpkin seeds, but still big and fat, the Jardel is great for that. Now, the one that I think it's interesting that both of us, when, when we say winter squash, but what we are going to choose to grow our pumpkins, you're going to grow Jaredale, and I'm going to grow Long Island cheese, which is the same species as butternut squash, uh, uh, Beta moshata. And because of that, it does not get squash fine borers. And I really like the flavor and the keeping quality of the Long Island cheese pumpkin. Um, so that's that's the one that I always recommend. It's my favorite. Now, several years ago, it's been a long time, I did an article for Mother Earth News on the best pumpkin, the best squash for pies. And when I hit the men, you know, you go around and try to get regional sources so you get different perspectives on, on what's the best, you know, squash for pie. And I heard about buttercups and, of course, had to grow them myself. And I have to say, a good buttercup put, makes the best pie. So I always have to put that one on the list, too. That's definitely something that we might have to look into. Um, we're talking with Barbara Pleasant, author, editor, lecturer, more. What are some good hedge plants that you could grow that will detour deer? Deer are a problem for a lot of people. What are some uh, plants that you can plant along your garden that the deer that will make the deer not want to be as attracted to your, your beautiful garden? Your deer are so big, too. You know, <laughs> it's like the further north you go, the bigger the deer get. I have a lot of deer pressure here, and, and I've made the mistake in the past of mowing paths from the woods straight to the garden. So they, it was the opposite of a detour. I put in a highway for the deer. That was a big mistake. Now, a deep um, thicket of uh, blackberries and raspberries and brambly things, will often deter them because they won't jump over something more than 12 feet, you know, kind of deep. But that's a lot of real estate to to put into a deer deterrent barrier. One of the plants I'm working with um, that may work out is uh, English basket 
basketry willows, little willow trees that can be planted very close together and become very dense, but that's just a special project. I don't know. One of the things I do in my garden, because deer incursion is going to happen, I live on the edge of the Blue Ridge Parkway National Park where there's no hunting and we have resident deer and passers through, is I never plant um, deer candy along the edge of the garden. Deer candy would be beans, peas, and I have quit growing sweet, I know you don't grow sweet potatoes, but they would ha- rather have sweet potatoes than anything. So, um, and all along the edge of the garden are, are herbs, which they never touch. And I never have them bother cucumber crops or squash. And so over the years, I think my summer garden has evolved to, to be more vegetables that deer just don't care for and fewer vegetables that they love. So basically don't uh, invite them in by cutting paths is the number one rule is what you're, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, I don't right? recommend doing <laughs> that. I realized what I'd done, and I went, oh, how dumb, you know, the human minds. That's because I wanted to walk. Right, you know, and that's the thing, yes. That way, and so I invited the deer to come. Come on in, girls. And uh, I had a uh, lot of damage. And, but still, just because I don't know when they're going to come, and they're going to come at night, and the second half of summer is when I'm going to have problems. Like I grow bush beans rather than pole beans because I can cover them with row cover o- overnight. You know, just spread out a row cover over the planting. And they, if they can't see it, they won't eat it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, let's talk about some uh, problems that people do whenever they store their produce. There's some uh, wrong ways that people store produce. What are some of the common ones that uh, you look at and go... That's that's not right at all, in a, in a kind way. Oh, I have looked at um, salsas that were under processed so that the tomato seeds and the salsas were actually sprouting. So um, <laughs> that's kind of spooky, um, which means that it didn't even get to 130 degrees Fahrenheit in those jars. They were under processed. Well. One of the, you know, I don't think gardeners mean to take shortcuts, but maybe they get in a hurry right at the end. Um, and so I think under processing with water bath is one of the things I've seen. Um, I know for many years my freezer uh, vegetables didn't turn out the way I liked, and I got a vacuum sealer, you know, less than $50 that um, sucks the air out of the freezer bag. And the quality of the snap peas is so much better, and the quality of the green beans is so much better um, that I really think if you're going to be serious about, you know, blanching and freezing a quantity of vegetables, and I am, investing in an inexpensive vacuum sealer is a good idea. Well, and that's the thing. Holly does a, a basics of canning a presentation, and it's, that's one thing. You can take a lot of shortcuts in gardening and, and growing, but processing food is one thing that you cannot take shortcuts uh, and expect to have good results or a healthy end to that. Yeah, yeah, and it's not that hard to do things right. Yeah. And um, so as a, as a gardener, you know, you put all this time into growing the crop, and then to, you know, get impatient at the end um, something you don't want to do. <laughs> yeah, I, I completely understand. So um, how can we find out more about you and your books and uh, all your great information? Well, I'm easy. At BarbaraPleasant.com has lots of information about me, and I have some pages about plants that I really like and stuff like that. And then as for my books, I have several, and if you go to Amazon just with my name, it'll pop them all up, or you can go to your local bookstore or library. You know, one of my tests of whether or not I want a book is when I've renewed it twice from the library, I need to buy it. <laughs> Good. Good uh, observation there. Well, we greatly appreciate, uh, Barbara, for t- coming on the program and sharing your knowledge with Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. 
Well, thanks, and I hope you have a wonderful season this year. Absolutely. Thank you. And when we come back, it's all about your garden questions and our garden answers. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. If you like fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood, you should check out Tree Ripe Citrus Company. You can find out where to pick up top quality produce from tree-ripe.com. They have beautiful tasty peaches and sweet juicy blueberries. If you're sick of bland millie peaches and lackluster blueberries from your local grocer, Tree Ripe has just what you need. They come right to a stop in your neighborhood, fresh off the truck, right from the source. For location and schedules, visit tree-ripe.com. They have locations all over, including Iowa, Upper and Lower Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, and right here in West Wisconsin. Tree-Ripe.com is your go-to for the freshest produce around. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh with carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available. Open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses, find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash patients. Get your garden growing with a Chapin Garden Seeder. Eliminate the backbreaking work of planting seeds in your garden. The model 8701B Seeder makes it easy to accomplish planting rows of seeds of various sizes. Find the Chapin Garden Seeder online or order it through your local Home Depot, True Value, or Do It Best Hardware Store. To see the full line of Chapin Lawn and Garden products, go to www.chapinmfg. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Drip Garden is a self-watering, self-fertilizing, pop-up vertical garden with automatic timer. Easy to use, durable, grow 36 plants in a 4-foot by 4-foot area. DripGarden.com Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, 
Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Ivy Organic 301 Plant Garden actually protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 301 Plant Garden email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can text us on the Instant Access IVOrganics.com text line, and that's 414-368-931. You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG. Our Twitter handle is at TWVG Show. Don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. And we had a caller uh, on the break, and it's, I think he was saying, Mama Tula, I hope I'm saying that right. And she had a question about her compost. She does a trench composting method, and she puts, she doesn't put meat in there, it sounds like, just uh, veg, vegetable scraps, uh, even bread, and then pasta. Cook, sounds like cooked pasta. And the animals are coming and digging it up. She did put a grate over top of that area, which was just a barbecue grate, uh, uh, and they were able to flip that over and flip that up and dig the compost, uh, the, the scraps out. I would probably stop putting cooked foods in there, just the raw vegetable scraps. I'd also try to dig it deeper, or even just put some like a two by four on it, uh, uh, some kind of plywood two by four, or scraps of lumber, just to suppress that down to prevent the animals from uh, digging that up. But also that that pasta, you may have included butter in that, uh, a, f- a smell of some sort, uh, uh, bread. That's probably enticing them to dig deeper. And if the animal is hungry enough. It really doesn't make it matter, really, honestly, what you do if it's hungry enough. Uh, on the farm, and, and I'll tell a story real quick, uh, when animals would pass away, we would take and bury them to get rid of them. And we would put them three, or f- three foot deep uh, in an area and cover them with soil. But in a couple of days, the coyotes, the cougars, the panthers would have it dug back up, and it would be out in the open. Pass, so Pass away. Pass away. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, they uh-huh. died. Yeah. It's a natural progression of I life. Know, it's just yeah. nice okay. how you said that. Uh, she had another question in regards to tree trimming and property lines. Sure. So she wanted to know um, the tree, if it grows over, like I said, the property line that grows over onto your neighbor's side, who's responsible for maintaining that tree on the other side? It would be you um, in most situations. It's your tree. You'd have to have a conversation with your neighbor, though, if you needed to get that tree trimmed or something, and then have it trimmed, but make sure it's on a, a day or time that is is okay for them too yes uh then we appreciate the the question and uh listening as well uh next question is hello my name is john i'm from uh the from west uh waukesha wisconsin i ha- i live in an apartment have a small patio and i would love to grow some veggies the problem is there's not a lot of sunlight here are there vegetables that do well that don't require a lot of sun well right so i have a saying i don't know where i got the saying from but if you grow up for the fruit or root you want full sun if you grow up for the greens or herbs you want it you can have partial shade so you can grow greens you can grow a lot of greens uh kale swiss chard you can even grow some root crops it might be a little bit not as yeah, big four to six hours of sunlight yeah um you could grow cherry tomatoes those are okay you wouldn't want to try you want like, at least six hours of sun for cherries yeah. uh um, herbs can go about four a little less than four hours uh lettuce, of spinach, lettuce yeah. radishes so there's a lot of options in which you can grow in partial shade partial shade being four to six hours our friend nathan in green bay what is the best time to plant asparagus and strawberry crowns before or after first frost date well uh, right now is the best time here in the upper portions of the midwest to get those in the ground you can uh, get them from bare roots from your local independent garden center or you can buy them online and uh, when you plant your asparagus you want to space the roots uh, out like a spider so that they can uh, produce and grow uh, for a long time 20 to 50 years and then strawberries will last five to seven years you have an option of growing june bearing which produce in june uh, that do produce daughter plants which is the propagation means of reproduction on the plant or or ever bearing which produce several times a year and uh, are uh, they do, do do not produce runners. On All right, the- next question, please. I need help. I have a compost pile of that heats up, but it smells like ammonia. Why? 
Well, this is because you uh, you do not have the right ratio. If your compost pile smells uh, like ammonia, uh, the most common reason is you have too much green material or lack of brown material in your compost pile. You should have about two to three times more brown material than green material. Brown material is uh, shredded paper, dry leaves, that type of item, and the green material is shredded or uh, grass clippings, chemical-free grass clippings, yard waste, kitchen scraps, that type of material. So get the ratio right, and the smell will go away. I normally plant my indeterminate tomatoes horizontally in my garden bed in the trench method. I have several determinate varieties that I was wondering if I can do the same practice too. I was reading you shouldn't trim off the bottoms as much as the indeterminate, so I thought maybe I shouldn't plant them horizontal in the trench method because I trim off quite a bit when they're indeterminate in the trench method. Well, you can plant the determinate varieties in, a, in the trench method. You may not want to bury them all the way. We plant ours about 75% down the stem, removing all the leaves except for the top canopy, With the and those are the indeterminate. With the determinate, you might want to only go about 50% uh, depth in the hole because the determinate is only going to get to a certain height then bear its fruit. Becky from Southern California writes in and asks, Two months ago, our family got a new Labrador puppy, and he chews on everything and loves to explore. My concern is that he will get in the vegetable garden and try to eat a fruit or vegetable, and it will make him sick. Do I need to be worried about this? So we're going to go out to Ben Bartley. He is from Standard Process Farms. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local health care professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. Hello, this is Ben Bartlett from the Standard Process Organic Farm. Today we got a great question from Becky. She got a new lab puppy and wondered if it was okay to have that puppy around the garden. It's a great question, and there's a couple things to be aware of. First one is your fertilizers. Make sure that after you put fertilizer down, even if it's organic, things like bone meal uh, or kelp meal, even those type of products can be poisonous or at least harmful if the puppy gets too much of them. So make sure that you water them in or work them into the soil so the puppy isn't attracted to, to eating some of those. The second thing is there is a classification of plants, uh, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, uh, potatoes. Those are all in the nightshade family. Those can be poisonous or very toxic to a, to a pet. So try not to let them eat either the plants or the fruit off, those, off that family of plants, and your puppy should be just fine around the garden. Well, we are out of time, and we certainly appreciate yours. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, I want to remind you that the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Tune in next week. Tell your friends. Share on social media. Follow us on our social media because we're going to be talking about tomato problems that you'll face in your garden and how to solve them, as well as alternatives to chemical fertilizer. Plus, landscaper Barbara Schwartz will be with us, an author, how to talk about how to transfer your yard into the garden of your dreams. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit in its entirety, you can do that a couple of ways. By going to your favorite podcast providing website, searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, or by going to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website, clicking on the radio tab or the highlight tab on the right-hand side of the page. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joy and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.